Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is look at the conditions for two lines, say L1 and L2, to be parallel when you're given the equations, the vector equations of the lines. Now, we should know that 2 minus 3, 1 for the line L1 represents a known fixed point on the line. And the same applies to 3 minus 1, 5, a known fixed point on the line L2. This vector at the end here represents a vector parallel to the line. So 1 minus 3, 4 could represent this vector here. Let's just mark it in as the vector 1 minus 3, 4. A vector then parallel to the line. And for line L2, PQR would also be a vector that is parallel to the line. So what we're looking for when you've got two lines that are parallel is that the direction vectors should be in the same ratio. In other words, you should be able to multiply this vector, say, by some value, and it would give you PQR. So if I've got 1 minus 3, 4, I could say double that vector and get 2 minus 6, 8. PQR would be 2 minus 6, 8. I could multiply it by a negative number if I wanted. And I would have minus 1, 3, and minus 4. It would be a vector exactly the same length as this, but in the opposite direction. But that doesn't matter. It would still signify that the lines were parallel. So basically, what we've got is that lines are parallel if the direction vectors are in the same ratio. Or we could say that PQR, let's just write it down here, PQR is equal to some value, we'll call it beta, being multiplied by the other direction vector, 1 minus 3, 4. In this case, obviously, this vector is going to vary depending on what you're given. Now, I've got a question here that you might like to try. It's quite tricky, um, but definitely uh, I would encourage you to have a go. We've got here, if the lines L1 is such that the position vector of any point on it is equal to 1 minus 5, 7 plus lambda, and then I've got here a minus 1 minus a minus 1, b, and L2 is a line where the position vector is equal to 9, 3 minus 8 plus mu times 2a, 3 minus 5a, 15. If these lines L1 and L2 are parallel, we've got to find the values of a and b. So why don't you pause the video and have a go at this one and come back when ready and I'll run through the solution. You should be able to then check your working with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Did you find that the values of A was a third or three? And the corresponding values of B was minus 15 and 5. If you did, you'd have got it right. Anyway, let's just run through it then and see how I would have tackled something like this. Well, we know that if the lines are to be parallel, this vector must be a multiple, or we can multiply it by something to give us this vector. Or we could say that they're in exactly the same ratio. And I'm going to compare then the i and j components. So if I just make a note here, compare the i and j components. What are we going to actually get? Well, I'm going to build up a ratio equation here. I'm going to say that a minus 1 compared with the i component here, 2a, is exactly the same as comparing minus a minus 1 with 3 minus 5a. And now I've got an equation in a, I can solve it. So if I was to multiply 
both sides of my equation by 2a and 3 minus 5a, I'm going to get a minus 1 multiplied by 3 minus 5a equals 2a multiplied by minus a minus 1. And if I expand the brackets, we end up with 3a and then we get minus 5a squared minus 3 and then plus 5a. And this equals minus 2a squared and then minus 2a. I've got a quadratic equation here because I've got terms in a squared. So I'm going to rearrange this, make it equal 0 by adding 5a squared to the right hand side. So 5a squared minus 2a squared is going to give me 3a squared. We've got 3a and 5a here, that's 8a, but if I subtract 8a from both sides, I've got minus 2a minus another 8a is minus 10a. And then add 3 to both sides, and that's going to equal 0. And I can factorise this. If I factorise it, we're going to have two brackets, it's going to equal 0. We're going to have a 3a and an a here, a 1 and a 3 and a minus and a minus. Check that out, you'll get that 3a squared minus 10a plus 3. So each of these two factors could equal 0, 3a minus 1 could equal 0, that would lead to a equaling 1 third. Or a minus 3 could equal 0 and that will lead to a equaling 3. So there's your two values of a. Now what about b? How are we going to get b? Well, we don't really know what that ratio is at the moment until we say put it into here, okay? We could substitute it into a minus 1 over 2a or you could do it another way. Now we could look at the i components. We could just make a little note there that if we were to multiply the i component here, a minus 1, with some value, let's call it beta, you can obviously use any value you want, it's got to come to 2a. So when a equals 1 third, as we had here, we can find out what this scale factor, if you like, is just by substituting this into this equation, which we'll call equation 1. So we get beta multiplied by 1 third minus 1, so that's going to be minus 2 thirds, equals 2 times a, 2 times a third, well that's going to be 2 thirds. And so clearly if you do 2 thirds divided by minus 2 thirds to get beta, it follows that beta equals minus 1. Now if beta is equal to minus 1, we can now find out what b is because we know that if you were to multiply beta with b, it should give us 15. And so beta is minus 1, so therefore we have, let's put it over here, it follows that minus 1 times b is going to equal 15, and from that, therefore, b equals minus 15. So there's one value of b. How do we get the other one? Well, we just need to do much the same kind of thing again, only this time when a is 3. So when a is 3, we can sub this value into 1. So we've got beta multiplied by a minus 1, so that's going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2, is going to equal 2a, 2 times 3, which is 6. So beta clearly has got to be 3. So it follows that beta equals 3. And when beta equals 3, we know that b times beta must equal 15. So since beta times b equals 15, it follows that 3b must equal 15 
if we substitute for beta and therefore b must equal 5. So we've got the corresponding values of a and b, okay? So we've got when a equals a third, b equals minus 15, and when a equals 3, b equals 5. So I hope you're able to get that and understand this concept then about parallel lines, that the direction vectors must be in the same ratio. Okay.